This morning, new charges in a crash on I-25 in Weld County that killed a young mother. It happened back in February. A truck was hauling an excavator when it hit a bridge and the debris fell onto her car. Nine News reporter Courtney Yoon joins us now. And Courtney, now the truck driver accused of causing this crash is facing felony charges. Yes, Corey, that's right. Several charges that he is facing right now, including vehicular homicide, criminally negligent homicide, child abuse, and reckless driving. He was formally charged in February in connection with the crash near Mead that happened in August. His his next court date is set for two weeks from now on June 2nd. 53 year old Darnell Yingling was towing an excavator that hit a bridge on I-25 back in August. As it went under the bridge, the arm of the excavator collided with the concrete cross beams, sending large pieces of debris through Megan Arneson's windshield. She was killed in the crash. Her son was also in the SUV with her. He was injured. Nine News legal analyst Scott Robinson says there seems to be significant evidence in this case that shows the truck driver consciously disregarded a substantial risk of harm to others. The circumstances of this case really indicate that the arm of the excavator was not down. So when the vehicle went under the underpass at County Road uh, 34, um, it wasn't going to fit. And that's the kind of, of conduct that you really don't expect to see from a professional driver. About a month after the crash, Arneson's family filed a lawsuit against the truck driver and his employer, Import Towing and Recovery. The family is seeking unspecified damages and has requested a jury trial, which is currently scheduled for mid-December. All right, Courtney, thanks for the update. Some new details this morning on how a 23-year-old man died in a trench collapse. A new investigation found the company he worked for failed to train or protect workers. The man died in December after an unprotected trench in Aurora a neighborhood collapsed and killed him. The Labor Department says his death could have been prevented if required protections were actually in place. OSHA found Brighton-based Coronado Excavations didn't train workers on trenching and excavation hazards and did not protect workers from things falling into the trench. The company is now facing a more than $110,000 fine. We now know exactly what made an apartment building in Aurora explode, forcing hundreds of people out of their homes. We just got a hold of the Aurora Fire Investigators report about the Parkside Collective Complex and a first look at the damage from inside the building. The report says the explosion happened in the electrical room on the fourth floor, blasting a hole in the wall to the outside and sending a shock wave that cracked drywall in hallways. It says an electrical problem started a fire beneath a side sidewalk. Burning pipes let off gases which collected in the electrical room. Then static electricity sparked the explosion. The building is now advertising leases again under a new name. Stella on the Park is open for move-in in about two weeks. More than 10,000 migrants have come into Denver since December, and of those, about 1,200 are still in shelters across the city. We are expecting another update from the city in just a couple of hours. The vast majority are in partner shelters, not at city-run facilities. Denver Mayor Michael Hancock thanked those groups today but reiterated the city's resources are not, in his words, bottomless. Last week, the city spent more than $360,000 on bus tickets for migrants trying to get from Denver to somewhere else. A Denver's already spent $17 million helping migrants with little money back from the federal government. This summer, Denver's only shelter with private rooms for women, transgender, and non-binary people is closing. In 2020, the Denver Housing Authority purchased the Roadway Inn Motel on Federal Boulevard. The city leased the motel during the pandemic, and the nonprofit, the Gathering Place, operated as a shelter. But the city is not renewing that lease, and so now the 70 people who are living there will have to leave by August 24th. So with the closure of, of Roadway um, and the work that we're doing here, there is no non-congregate option for um, specifically for trans and non-binary people. It, it really sucks to be told there is no other place for you in this city. Um, in the city, not only is there no other place, but the city is declining to invest in places like this elsewhere. The city says it has more than $23 million to purchase non-congregate shelters this year, but it isn't saying which populations those shelters will serve. Studies show LGBTQ plus people are at higher risk of homelessness and are more likely to face challenges within the national shelter, uh, the traditional shelter system. Now the gathering place is working to find their guests somewhere else to go, and they plan on partnering with other nonprofits to eventually open another non-congregate shelter for women, transgender, and non-binary people. 
New overnight, Ukrainian officials say they shot down almost 30 Russian missiles over Odessa and Kyiv. At least one person died and several buildings were damaged. It's the latest in a string of attacks against Ukraine. President Volodymyr Zelensky has been traveling around Europe asking leaders for support. The UK just promised more military aid and last week the US just pledged 1.2 billion more dollars. Right now, President Biden is in Japan for the G7 conference. He just touched down there within the last few hours. While he's still, while he's there, President Biden will meet with other world leaders to talk about the risk of nuclear power, the Russia-Ukraine war, and North Korea. He'll also visit Hiroshima. The trip was originally supposed to last for eight days, but the president is going to come back early to keep negotiating about the debt ceiling. This morning, we are hearing from the cab driver who drove Prince Harry and Meghan Markle through New York City while paparazzi chased them. Meghan and Harry were leaving an event and were met by a group of photographers who started following them. After more than an hour, they stopped outside a police station, got out of their car and into a taxi cab. The driver says he drove them around for about 10 minutes before dropping them back off at the police station. He says it really wasn't as dramatic as it might have seemed. We were just making left turns and right turns and that's it. They were not being that aggressive while they were driving behind us. A spokesperson for the couple says the night was, quote, near catastrophic, and a lot of people are comparing this to the chase that ended with the death of Harry's mother, Princess Diana. But police aren't even calling it a chase, just a, quote, situation. They say no one was hurt or arrested. And one thing you want to know about today's weather, it's going to be a lot cooler than yesterday's 78. Only 50s and 60s along the front range with a chance for showers and thunderstorms this afternoon, and tomorrow pretty much more of the same.